from our derivation of a general equation for mass transfer uh, derivative, we saw a quantity called DAB. It stands for the diffusion constant or coefficient of species A into species B. And uh, in a chemical engineering class, it would be natural to ask, how do people actually find what this diffusion coefficient actually is? And so the way people do that is via an uh, apparatus called an Arnold cell. And an Arnold cell is a uh, long glass tube. And at the bottom of it, uh, or it, it will contain in the bottom your species A and uh, species B. And uh, typically B will be air, and we can call A water. Um, but to keep things generic, we will leave uh, the terms A and B in our equation. And so what you'll have outside is some kind of fan blowing air across or over your Arnold cell. And because of that, it sweeps away A as it uh, diffuses into B. So A is diffusing into B, and uh, this is an Arnold cell. The key uh, assumption, one of the key assumptions we make with Arnold cells is that B is insoluble in A. And what this means in math is that uh, if, uh, if this is our z-axis, we will say that the flux of B in the z-direction must be equal to zero. It's a work on my handwriting. Oh. <laughs> um, and what I will do is first redraw my Arnold cell so I can start defining some variables to work with. Uh, what we will have, so this is species A, uh, we will call this point here Z1, called the point at the top Z2, and we'll call this Z equals zero. So this uh, upward axis is our z-axis. You'll figure out why <laughs> I don't call this y in a second. Um, and at the at this point, we will assume we're at a constant concentration of y, a molar ratio y a1. So the moles of a over the total moles of a at this particular z location. And then at the top here, we will have another molar ratio of a called y a2. And uh, the first thing we're going to do in our Arnold cell uh, is apply the general uh, mass transfer equation that we derived earlier. And that tells us that the divergence of the flux vector plus the change in the concentration of A over time minus the rate of reaction of A must be equal to zero. And with Arnold cells, we will assume uh, the concentration of A is constant over time. We can assume a pseudo steady state uh, hypothesis. And uh, we will also say that there's no reaction occurring. Um, we can say that A and B are inert species. And what this tells us is that the divergence of your flux vector uh, is equal to zero. And so analyzing and dissecting our flux vector, uh, Na, sorry, Na is equivalent to minus C, your total concentration, times the diffusion coefficient of A into B, times the partial derivative of your molar ratio of A in the Z direction, plus the molar ratio of A times the flux of A in the Z direction plus the flux, oh, I'm sorry, this is not the flux factor. This is um, just flux of A in the Z direction. So this is, the com this is a component of your flux factor, not the flux factor itself. Sorry about that. Um, so continuing. We have plus NBZ, and 
because of this assumption we made earlier, because b is insoluble, we can say that nbz must be equal to zero. And uh, further simplifying this equation, what we have is that the flux of A in the Z direction in your Arnold cell is equal to minus C times DAB divided by 1 minus YA. So we're doing some algebra sub substitutions here with subtracting this minus YA and AZ and then pulling the NAZ out uh, and then times DCA DZ. And so from this equation, what we're going to do is integrate it. And when we do that, what we will have is that the integral from z1 to z2 of naz dz must be equal to minus c dab and then times the integral from ya1 to ya2 of dya over 1 minus ya. And so at this point, if we evaluate this integral, the boundary conditions that we will use, the first boundary condition, I need to really work on my Bs. Uh, the first boundary condition is that YA evaluated at Z1 is equal to YA1. And then the second boundary condition tells us YA evaluated at Z equals Z2 must be equal to YA2. Plugging this in and evaluating this integral, which is a little bit tricky, but uh, I can let you guys do that on your own. Uh, what we end up with is, sorry, what we end up with is NAZ, the flux of A in your Z direction, is equal to the total concentration times the diffusion co constant of A into B divided by Z2 minus Z1. This quantity is the height of the liquid in your Arnold cell. And then times the natural log of 1 minus YA2 divided by 1 minus YA1. If we now rearrange this equation and we solve for DAB, what we end up with is DAB is equal to the flux of A in the Z direction times the height of the fluid in your Arnold cell divided by the total concentration in your Arnold cell and then times the quantity natural log or ln of 1 minus ya2 over 1 minus ya1 inverse and at this point you have now successfully evaluated what your diffusion constant should be the next question though is how do we figure out what the uh, NAZ term is because we can measure Z2 and Z1 and C uh, pretty easily as well as we would have a good idea of what YA1 is, the interface molar ratio of A in your Arnold cell um, based on Henry's law if it's dilute or uh, some other uh, vapor liquid equilibrium relationship. and uh, so the, the, the next challenge here in actually finding what your diffusion coefficient is, is finding out, figuring out what NAZ is. And to get NAZ within your Arnold cell, you'll note that uh, Z1 is slowly decreasing as a function of time. So we've got Z1 at T1 and we've got, uh, sorry, there shouldn't be a negative. Uh, we've got Z1 at a new t2 which is greater than t1 and so in practice you would have someone here looking at the level as it's changing with a stopwatch over time and that's a great eye <laughs> um, and so if we look at the volume change in your Arnold cell the number of moles to figure out the number of moles of a that have uh, uh, diffused out 
what we would have is z1 at t1 and z1 at t2. We look back at the definition of NAZ, and uh, it tells us the number of moles, or as units of moles of A per area per time. And so looking at this relationship, what we can say is that, so the volume change of A over time would be equivalent to the area of the base, pi big R squared, the radius of your Arnold cell, times delta Z1, the change in the height over that time period. And then we are going to multiply this quantity by the density of your species A. And then we're going to multiply this by the molecular weight or molecular mass of your species A. And we're going to divide this quantity by the area, which would be pi r squared, and then uh, also divide it by the change in time or the time period you were looking at your Arnold cell. So doing a dimensional analysis on this might help uh, illustrate what's going on here. So we have the volume of A, uh, and then we're looking at this in terms of the mass of A. Uh, so this would be like the grams of A per volume. And then the molecular weight of A will tell us the moles of A per uh, gram. And so the, the numerator will have units of moles of A, which is checks out with what we want here. And then the bottom will have uh, area pi r squared, and then the time is the delta t. So delta t in this case would be equivalent to t2 minus t1. And uh, the units and dimensions agree on this, and this would give you what your flux of A in the z direction is, uh, in practice. So once you have evaluated what NAZ is, um, the other question is uh, Z1, if Z1 is a function of time, Z1, you can take an average and use that value to, uh, in your calculations, to actually figure out what um, <laughs> uh, what your diffusion coefficient should be. And so I hope you guys found this useful. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.